Hi everyone, it's Miss Hong again, and we're going to be going over how to apply the exact same formulas, but in using gravity and free fall concepts, so using height, and if you were to throw a ball upwards, or if you were falling off a building, how you would apply gravity, so gravity as the acceleration in those kinematic equations, okay? So we're going to go over a few points here. An object in free fall experiences an acceleration of minus 9.8 meters per second squared. The minus sign indicates a downward acceleration. So whether it's stated or not, the value of the acceleration in the kinematic equation is minus 9.8 meters per second squared for any freely falling object, okay? If an object is merely dropped, as opposed to being thrown from an elevated height, then the initial velocity of the object is zero meters per second. If an object is projected upwards in a perfectly vertical direction, then it will slow down as it rises upwards. The instinct at which it reaches the peak of its trajectory, its velocity is also zero meters per second. This value can be used as one of the motion parameters in a kinematic equation. For example, the final velocity v subscript f after traveling to the motion, uh, to the peak would be assigned a value of 0 meters per second. If this object is projected upwards in a perfectly vertical direction, then the velocity at which it is projected is equal to the magnitude and the opposite in sign to the velocity that it has when it returns to the same height. That is if a ball projected vertically with an upward velocity of plus 30 meters per second will have a downward velocity of minus 30 meters per second when it returns to the same height. So it's just the opposite sign, but the same velocity. So again, gravity given in your uh, formula sheet is 9.8 meters per second, and we'll be using it as the acceleration in a lot of our equations. So again, I rewrote the equations that are found in your formula sheet that we'll be referring back to when we use our problem solving steps to solve the next few questions that I have for us. Okay, so you can always rewind in the video anytime if you would like to copy down the notes. So example one, Dini drops a pile okay, of roof shingles from the top of the roof located 8.52 meters above ground. Determine the time required for the shingles to reach the ground. So the solution, again, for this problem begins by constructing a very informative diagram of the physical situation. And the second step will then identify the listing of known information, okay, so list all the known variables from the question onto that diagram. So let's start off by drawing it. So I'm gonna draw just a kind of like a height here from a roof, so this is a house. And then from this distance down to this distance, the ground here, we know is 8.52 meters, okay? The acceleration in this question, so it's freely falling, and we know from point one that it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And the velocity in which, because she just drops a pile of roof shingles from the top there, she just drops it, so the initial velocity equals zero meters per second. Okay? Now we have to identify what is the unknown variable. I have it too thick of a pen here. So we are finding, okay, in the question itself, it tells you the unknown variable. We are looking for time. We don't know what time is. Okay, so how long will it take, all right, for the shingles to reach the ground? So we have initial velocity and we have acceleration and we have the displacement or the distance, now we need time. So let's go back to our equations page and try to figure out which equation we can use. Okay, so we have a bunch of equations here 
and we know that we don't have the final velocity. So that means it's going to cancel out a bunch of equations that we can use. That means we can use this one right here. So let's transfer that over into our questions page here and write that down. So we can use the equation d equals initial velocity times time plus one and a half times acceleration times time squared. Okay, and now we're going to fill in all the uh, known variables into this equation to find for time. So minus 8.5 2 meters equals 0 meters per second times time, which we do not know what it, what it is, plus uh, 0 0.15 times minus 9.8 meters per second squared times time again squared. Okay, so now we're going to solve some, we're going to make it a little bit more simplified by adding doing some of the calculations here. So again, this is minus 8.52 meters equal zero meters, okay, uh, times by time plus the minus 4.9 meters squared times by time squared. Okay, then we're going to keep going here, and we have minus 8.52 meters equals minus 4.9 meters per second squared um, by t squared, and we're going to isolate it over, so we're going to divide it over here, meters squared, okay, and then these signs cancel out, and then... Um, this also cancels out because we're dividing it to isolate it. And then we get 1.739 uh, seconds squared equals t squared. And we're going to square root it to isolate the t and get the answer of 1.32 seconds. So the solution reveals that shingles will fall for a time of 1.32 seconds before hitting the ground. And now our last step is to make sure that we're checking the answer to make sure that it's reasonable and it is accurate. The value does seem reasonable enough because the shingles are falling from a distance approximately um, um, approximately like 10 meters off the ground. And it seems that the answer between one to two seconds is highly reasonable, especially with that acceleration of 9.8 meters per second. So that's very good. So look back at the equation, see if you understand it. Now I'm going to move on to example number two. Emma throws her mother's crystal vase vertically upwards with an initial velocity of 26.2 meters per second. Determine the height to which the vase will rise above its initial height. Emma better catch that or she getting in trouble. Okay, anyway, so... Again, we're going to have to draw this problem. So the first step is always draw a diagram to help you better understand what's going on with the problem. And then we're also going to identify the known variables of this problem. So I'm going to draw Emma. And she's throwing a vase upwards. Oops. My apologies here. It's not very straight. Okay. Okay like so and she threw it upward and then the acceleration is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared her final velocity once it reaches up to the maximum height we know that it's going to be zero point meters per square as we went over those points in the free fall so you can go back a few uh, minutes here and then look over those points for free fall and you'll know that the final velocity is zero meters per second her initial velocity, so how much force did she exert it up to throw that glass vase? Her initial, uh, sorry, her initial velocity, so V subscript I, equals 26.2 meters per second. 
And now the question is asking us, um, determine the height. So that height number is actually D or the distance or displacement. We do not know. So we want to find uh, D. Okay. So now that we know we have the variables D, uh, final velocity, acceleration, and initial velocity, let's go back to our equations and determine which equation we can actually use. Okay. Let's see. So I'm going to erase our notes from last time and try to figure it out. So the equations that we can use, we know that we have um, to look for distance or displacement, and we have acceleration, final velocity, and initial velocity, but we cannot use the equation with time. So we know that automatically cancels this one, this one, and we can use this one. Okay, because those ones all have time. This one does not have time. So we can solve for the missing variable of D. Continuing on, let's write down that equation. So VF equals VI subscript plus 2AD. Now we are going to fill in our numbers into this equation and solve for the missing variable. So again, 0 meters per second squared equals 26.2 meters per second squared. Okay, and then plus two, and we're gonna be multiplying against negative 9.8 meters squared. And then we're looking for D, which is also multiplied here. Don't forget the minus sign in the 9.8, that's very important. And now we're going to continue through our calculations. So it's 0 meters per second squared. Squared equals uh, 686.44 meters per second squared. Squared, because this went all the way through. And then we are also adding negative 19.6 meters squared multiplied by d. This is negative 19 because we used the 2 and multiplied it through. And now we're continuing to isolate. So we move over some variables. So over here, we're going to have negative 19.6 meters squared uh, multiplied by d equals 0 meters per squared squared minus uh, 686.44 meters squared over s squared. And now, so that minus over, and you're going to get a minus 68.644 meters uh, second square squared equal, uh, writing this again, meters squared over D. And then isolate for D by dividing the 19 over to this side meters squared okay and then our d value d equals 35.0 meters i just ran out of space so i had to make it smaller so that is the answer here d equals 35.0 meters so look through the question again, see if you understand it. Remember our last part, uh, the last step to solving it is double checking if 35 meters makes sense. Is it reasonable? And I think it's definitely reasonable because the base is thrown with a speed that is approximately um, 30 meters per second, right? Upwards, okay? And... That speed with the acceleration coming down, I think it's possible that she can throw it 35 meters up. Maybe the glass uh, vase is, or the crystal vase isn't that heavy. So, well, it sounds reasonable. Okay, so look over these uh, videos and also practice those practice worksheets again. Let me know. I can give you another practice worksheet with the answers as well posted. And then attempt your assignment. So, all the best. Good luck to everyone. Have a great day.